Happy Valentine's Day! Look at this cute little matching cream and sugar. And it has its lid. So hard to find. And these are tiny. I don't know, it's... You can't really tell the scale, I guess, from watching at home, but you'll just have to... These are just minis. They're really cute. Eh. Three, four, five, five bucks. It's cute. And uh, let's see, uh, these are kind of chunky. I've never seen these before. Very chunky. There's no, there's a, well, I can't see it. It's too small. It really is too small. I think it's Imperial Glass. I think I see the I in the G. Do you see the I in the G? It's so small. It's really, I can't see it with my own eyeballs. But um, it might be imperial glass. They're just, they're very heavy. Kind of deco looking. Okay. I um, put a couple things in my car. I'm going to show you them when I get in the car. Here's some more depression glass. It's a real common pattern and one that's been reproduced. And these are usually chipped. We've talked about that before. We saw it in blue a few days ago. Okay, put your bananas in that. Very nice. And somewhere around here I saw a uh, set of uh, pirates bowls that are uh, there's, they're that clear glass with the fired on or flashed on color. You know what I'm talking about. They have clear bottoms. I don't, I don't particularly think I'm going to buy them, but let me go find them and I'll show them to you anyway. Also, you might want to see these. Here they are. You know, these are in really good condition. And I, I checked the comps online and it's sort of all over the place. This, you know, they can go for just a few dollars. I've seen a set sell for like $40. Now it's in really good condition. Uh, I'm probably not going to buy it. So let's add it all up. That's $3 and $4. So that's seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven dollars. Plus five. Okay. So sixteen dollars for this set. Now that's a steal if you want to keep it. You know, I could buy it and maybe make $20 off of it because it's in really good condition. Um, or I could sell it bowl by bowl just as replacements. But I'm just, for me personally, going to make the decision that I don't think I'm going to, I just don't think I'm interested in reselling this. Um, as I said, I did check the sale comps and there's quite a wide range in, in exactly what happens with that set. So, but you know what? Listen, I don't have to buy everything and somebody else is gonna be thrilled to find it. Look at this tidbit tray. Beautiful ice blue color for winter time. Isn't that nice? What are those white puffy cookies? Uh, what are they called? You know what I mean. They look like they're covered in uh, confection and um, uh, uh, powdered sugar. What are those cookies called? My mother always makes them at Christmas. Wouldn't they look nice on that? You know, they're covered in confectioner sugar. You know what I mean. How much is this? It's only four dollars. 
I like the pattern and the color and the uh, color of it. You guys like that? I kind of like it. Snack sets up here. Cute. All right, I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek really quickly of what's in my cart, but then I'll, I'll tell you more about it when I get it outside. Bam, that's all you get. What a tease. All right, it's starting to get noisy in here. <laughs> it doesn't take long banging dishes around. Okay, there it is. There it is. I have a lot of stops to make, so I'm not going to be much longer in this particular store, but I'm going to take you with me every place I go today. I know, I know, you want me to get those bowls, but I'm not going to do it. I did, uh, I have something in my cart that I'm going to need your help with. Not in identifying it, but in completing it. Com oh, goodness. But I need your help completing it. You'll see what I mean. I'll tell you in a minute. Sorry, I'm moving fast now. Look at these. Now, if that's Blendo, it's a shape I haven't seen before. Is it Blendo? Blendo or some, somebody else? I bought and sold lots of Blendo, but I haven't seen that particular shape of uh, tumbler before, so maybe it's not Blendo. Maybe it's something. Feels like it. Looks like it. But who knows? I don't know. I don't know. What do I know? Nothing. I'm being silly. What did that man get? Hmm. But there's more of it. 99 cents each. Is it cute? Woo! Okay. Uh I'm going to check out. Let's check out. Really? Oh, the possibilities, the endless possibilities. Could we possibly leave a poor little old piece of furniture alone?
Oh, hi everybody, it's Scott. I just forgot to say hello. <laughs> We're shopping again. Gonna see what's what. Or what's not what. Isn't it wonderful? It's quiet in here. They haven't turned on the music yet. No screaming children. No bad shopping carts making noise. Just me making noise. It's because I'm not finding anything. All right, let's be hopeful. Hmm. You know, I've done it again. I've gone and forgotten the blue, blue and green, blue and green. Please, everybody keep reciting that because I always look at the sign and then I forget. Blue and green is on sale today. Now, I've already picked that up five... Oh, you can't see it. I've already picked that up five times. Don't be fooled. It's not... It's nothing. And, and I'm, what I mean to say is it's new. Blue and green, blue and green. Okay, nothing in the lamp department. And I do spy. Do you spy it? I spy it. What? See if you can tell me what you see. Now, I just had this in... I had three of these in a thrift haul video, oh, last week. And way down here is another one. And it's one that I don't... that I didn't have. It's another example. Of a uh, cocktail shaker missing its top and I keep thinking that these are Hazel Atlas Hazelware slash Continental Can Company even though there's no mark on the bottom. Two fifty. Um, yeah, that that one's not. That's okay. It does. There was a lot of gay nineties. Um, resurgence interest in the gay 90s in the 1950s and 60s you saw a lot of that so it's not all that mid-century and it's not really speaking to me so I think I might pass on it and keep <laughs> keep searching what are my colors again oh my good blue blue and green blue and green okay Well, let's go over here to these shopping carts that have just been wheeled out. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we won't. I'm thinking we won't. Uh, okay, no good. All right, I'm gonna do these, well, let's go down here. Where the dishes are. Now, I know the lighting is usually pretty bad in this aisle. Uh, in fact, it's very bad, so I apologize in advance. It's gonna be difficult for you guys to see. Mm. 
back up here. <clears throat> I'm going slowly so you guys, I know you're shopping with me. You want to see. And remember, my main interest is the 1920s into the 60s. Anything beyond the 60s, I, I rarely purchase. There are things of value uh, and that sell well that are more contemporary pieces, but uh, I, I, it doesn't fit my interest in or my shop, so... If you see things that are that are modern that I'm passing by, just a reminder again, that's the reason why I just, do, just don't really deal in modern things. Mm, so I don't see anything outstanding. Quick look at the mugs. Uh, no de-handled jadeite. Well, poo, poo, poo. All right. We have one more chance on this side. Nothing. Here's this poor little uh, grill plate in bubble, but it's all chipped up on the end. See it? I haven't seen grill plates by Anchor Hawking in the bubble pattern. I don't think I have. All right, lots of clear clear glass that's not old I think the lighting is really bad U turn, U turn. About face. Mm hmm. Blue and green, blue and green. I have to keep reciting that. Now, these are nice looking, aren't they? I think I like the style of those. And uh, I've never seen these before. I have no idea who made them. I'm assuming that they're not old. They have an old design to them. But anybody know who made these? Uh, I don't know. I think they're attractive, but again, I've just, I've never seen these before. All right. I'm not even finding anything to talk about. used to be an old uh, hymn, remember? It, it was. It said, uh, you, you can talk about me, you can talk, talk, talk about me, I'll talk, talk, talk about you down on my knees. You know, you, you can talk about me, but I'll, I'll pray for you. <laughs> oh, I'm just rambling now. I'll be quiet. <laughs> What's the name of that hymn? You can talk about me as much as you please. You can talk about me as much as you please. You can talk about me as much as you please. I'll talk about you down on my knees. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord anymore. I yep, this is the way it is sometimes. It's not a Tiffany lamp every day. Sometimes it's junk, junk, junk.
But you know, it's the thrill of discovery. What's, what's waiting right around the corner? Let's go around this corner and see what's waiting. Is it gonna be my Tiffany lamp? Let's see. Oh, I was let down. Again. Oh well. But we're shopping together, we're having fun. Okay, I'm getting out of here. <sighs> hmm. There's a lot of money in vintage tie. When I say vintage, I mean 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s ties. And I'm in an old, old Philadelphia neighborhood with old, old houses. And every now and then you get a truckload of really old neckties. And boy, they can, they, you can, I've made hundreds of dollars on vintage necktie, antique neckties. But I'm not seeing any, I know what they look like and I'm not seeing any today. But I always look. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. Let's go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a sandwich. Hmm. Well, hi everybody. I am obviously back inside now. And uh, it's actually the day after. <laughs> uh, and uh, chilly morning we had today. We was back down in the, in the teens. Uh, and then it's been climbing through the 20s this morning. And, um, but I've got my coffee, a ginger snap. And uh, a nice little fire going back here. So uh, thanks for sticking around with this really extra long video. So I'm going to take a bite of this, a sip of this, and then I'm going to show you. I didn't pick up too much. And uh, I'm obviously not out on the kitchen counter, but I want to show you what I, what I did purchase anyway. Some very nice things. Well... I hope everyone had a nice weekend, or is having a nice weekend. I sure am. And you know I wouldn't talk and drink in front of you unless we were friends. Okay. So you just saw in the thrift shop, for $3 I purchased this. Which reminds me a lot of Duncan Miller's teardrop pattern. I haven't even done anything to look this up, so I have no idea. I don't think it's Duncan Miller. I used to have a whole bunch of teardrop, and then I sold it years and years and years ago. But this is very similar to it. And it's just a beautiful clear crystal glass bowl with these wings on the side in a bubble pattern. Uh, I like it because of how Art Deco it is, and unusual. It's, I, you know, I've never seen it before. So I'm going to have fun trying to figure out who made it. Maybe some of you already know and can tell me. A lot of the Depression Glass companies made bowls like this with um, these sort of flying buttress wings, if you will. And I, I, I like it. Okay, so... That was $3. Uh, you also saw in my cart when I was in the thrift store, I showed you very quickly, I gave you a sneak peek. And you saw this very quickly. Uh, this is brand new, unused. Uh, it's a West Bend percolator, probably dates to about 1960. And uh, with the original cord in excellent let me pull it out of there in excellent condition. It's absolutely never been used. I will show you. And you know, I love percolated coffee. Some of you may enjoy your coffee that way as well. Um, and we can see here that this was, well, let me move up and show you. 
original label. Sparkling clean, completely unused. And look at all the fantastic paperwork that we get on the inside. Okay, we'll pull all this out. And again, I'm gonna date this to right around 1960. Here are 50 ideas for happier homemaking. You see that? By West Bend. There's no date on any of this paperwork, but it's very early 60s looking. And even on the back. And of course, all I have to do is look up the model number and I'd, I'd be able to find out what year it was produced. And um, this is funny. This says, inspected by F14. If the contents of this package uh, do not agree with your order or you have other reasons to write us about it, please return this ticket with your comments. And poor old F14 gets called on the carpet. Ooh. Do they do that anymore? I don't even think companies, you know, do that any, any longer. And here are the complete instructions for your percolator. Here's a little, uh, oh, this is called the Quaker Oats Customer Bonus Offer. Now that you are enjoying your new West Bend automatic percolator, here's your opportunity to get an additional perk for only $5.50 each by sending in the blue star appearing on the label of Mother's Oats or Quaker Oats packages. So something happens with that. Love it. And this is funny. This says uh, repair and service stations for electrical appli appliances. And it lists every state in the union and the addresses of all of the places where you can go and, and have repairs made. I bet none of these are in existence anymore. Can you imagine anybody trying to get a percolator repaired? We don't repair anything in this country, we throw it out. And so from state to state, it tells you where you can go. Let's just pick a state for fun. Hopefully it's where, let's see. No, we'll just pick one. Okay, what did I look at right off the bat? Ohio. So we have several of them in Ohio. Let's see. Um, in Cincinnati, the Golden Rule Electric, Electric Company on Elm Street. Anybody from Ohio in Cincinnati? Anything there on, at 808 Elm Street? In Cleveland, the Electric Sweeper Service Company. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not going to read all of them. Lawrence Electric Company on Main Street in Zanesville, Ohio. In Youngstown, General Repair and Equipment Company on Summit Street. This is just very quaint, you know, and, and as I said, probably all of these repair shops are long gone. So, uh, I paid $10 for that percolator. But I'll sell it for upwards of 30 because it's absolutely brand new. Okay, uh, two more things to show you. This was in my cart in the Goodwill that you saw. And of course it's made, it's a piece of Art Deco amethyst glass, which you can see. And it's a liquor decanter. And it's uh, Farber Ware is who uh, did the metal casing, which is typical. I think Farberware was in Brooklyn. I can't see... It says New York, New York, so I think it was Brooklyn, Farber Brothers. I can't see the rest of it, but anyway. Um, so what I said I needed help on is, obviously we're missing a stopper, which was probably amethyst glass. I'm never gonna find it. But I would like to find some kind of a stopper that would be acceptable and wouldn't look too too bizarre. I guess I could just stick a cork in it. But um, if anyone out there has an amethyst stopper, now I don't want anything, you know, cut glass or anything that would obviously look like a marriage, 
um, but anything close. Uh, I've never seen a chrome stopper. I, I, I suppose there could be one with cork at the bottom of it, but I would love something that would actually look good and, and be look not original unless I could find the original. Anyway, I'm going to keep this. This was only, I think, two or three dollars. And then a few hours later, I was in another shop and I found four of these. Now, these are the kind of chrome cordials that would go with something like this. These are unmarked, so I don't know who made them, but they're perfect together, as you can see. Uh, this would really look good on the kitchen counter. I see a lot of these in a much more common pattern than this. This is a slightly unusual one and a great design. So, as I said, here's the decanter and... Uh, just an hour later in another store, four of these. And these have a really great deco style to them. I paid three dollars for the four of these. And I'll show you everything when I um, actually get it out on the kitchen counter. So the last thing I want to show you so that this video doesn't become a one hour episode. Um, I have not found a Maxfield Parish print in probably ten years. I used to find them all the time in the 19... Well, I'm not going to say all the time. Uh, Max, Maxfield Parish prints were highly... Well, they're still highly collectible, but the price has gone... Uh, but big in the 1970s, 80s. Um, and Maxfield Parish is one of those artists that you know his work, even though you may not know his name. Um, his most famous work was called Daybreak. You've all seen it. Uh, there's one woman, if I remember, she's lying, reclining against a Grecian column, and then there's another woman standing. It's a beautiful scene. You've seen it. It's like the work of Edward Hopper. You're familiar with Edward Hopper, Hopper's work as soon as you see it. Maxwell Parrish was a, an illustrator, an artist, and mostly known for his illustrations. He did work for... Um, many of the popular magazines of the 1920s and 30s. Uh, he did calendar art for General Electric. I think I remember uh, Edison Mazda light bulbs. I think he did some advertising for them as well. And he actually studied art uh, three blocks from where I'm sitting. I'm sitting just a block off of Broad Street in Philadelphia. And uh, three blocks south of me is the, uh, the Academy of the, of the Fine Arts in Philadelphia, which is the oldest art school in America. I think it was founded in something like 1812, 1813. I should walk down there and film the building for you. It's just a few, as I said, a few blocks away. He studied there, and there is a wonderful... Um, windows. Well, it's not a window. It's a huge glass mural in the Curtis Publishing Company on Washington Square here in Philadelphia that, uh, I, if I remember correctly, it's Tiffany Glass, but he, he actually designed the work himself. And I need to walk down there and film it for you. Anyway, having said all that, this is an original Maxwell Parish print. It's called The Canyon, and these prints have been reproduced. One of the things you want to look for is fading. There's almost always a little bit of fading in, in these prints. This print is now easily 100 years old. And the publishing company quite often is Rosenthal... I'm sorry, Reinhall & Newman, New York. That's one of the publishers. You can't see it. Well, maybe you can. It's right there. This is the original frame. It's a very typical frame for Maxfield Parish with the blue paint. Original frames are important. It's also important to find them without any foxing. You don't want any water damage. You don't want any rippling. You don't want any serious fading. All of that affects Max, the value of Maxwell Parish prints. This one, there's no foxing. Uh, there are no watermarks. There's no, and very, very little. I would say maybe from 100%, I think we're down to about 90 on this in terms of the, 
the vibrancy of the color. So there's always going to be a little bit of, bit of fading unless it was stored in a closet. Uh, so, yes. The Canyon, what does it sell for? In this condition, this will sell for between $80 to $150. I paid $16. It was hanging on the wall, and of course, this is one of his popular, popular works of art. And so, um, I recognized it immediately. Get, look through, look through um, a book on Maxfield Parish, or look him up. He has a very distinctive style. There's what I call, well, not what I call, but what collectors call the Maxfield Parish Blue. He was a master of contrasting colors, and I love his work. I bought and sold 10, 15, 20 of his prints. And uh, so there's still a, a nice profit to be made in these prints. And uh, so Daybreak was extremely popular. One called Art Ca uh, Air Castles, another one called Dinky Bird, which is sort of a, an androgynous looking person on a swing in a canyon with bubbles behind her or him. <laughs> Um, they're, they're very fanciful scenes. And then he continued to work into the 40s. He did calendar artwork, nice landscapes. But this is the type of work he's most famous for, Maxfield Parish. Uh, and this is a good size and good condition, so enough rambling on about that. Um, seems to me I was going to say something else to you, but I don't remember. So yes, this was $16 hanging on the wall uh, in the very last shop that I stopped in. Okay, that's everything on this trip. Uh, I'll be coming up again real soon with a kitchen counter thrift haul. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.